All right, guys, you probably heard that somebody leaked a Supreme Court document which reveals that Roe v. Wade is going to be overturned within the next couple of months. Everybody wants to know who it was that leaked it. We have conservatives claiming that it was a liberal who leaked it. And we have liberals claiming it was a conservative who leaked it. So we're going to look at the reasoning behind that. And I want to look at all the suspects. We have about 45 suspects in total. And that's if you assume it was either one of the justices or one of their law clerks. You know, maybe it was the janitor or the cleaning lady. Who the hell knows? But it's probably one of 45 suspects. The 36 law clerks or the justices themselves. Now, I... Doubt very much it was one of the justices. It was more likely to be a rogue uh, law clerk who did it. So we're going to be looking at the names of these. A couple of people on Twitter have been naming names. And we're going to look into that as well towards the end of the video. So let's look at the article in question. This is the article that, that blew everything up. Supreme Court has voted to overturn abortion rights. Draft opinion shows. So it's a draft opinion. It's, it's not set in stone yet. We hold that Roe and Casey must be overruled. Justice Alito writes an initial majority draft circulated inside the court. This article was written by Josh Gerstein and Alexander Ward, published on May 2nd and updated the following day. Today is the 4th, so this broke a couple of days ago. So Josh Gerstein, he knows who the leaker is. He received this leak from his source, who is the leaker, and Alexander Ward, who co-wrote the article, he also knows. So these two guys, Alexander Ward, Josh Gerstein, these guys know who the leaker is. So let's scroll down a bit here. Here is the initial draft and it's 98 pages. I'm not going to go into it, but they highlight in the article some important points. Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak and the decision has had damaging consequences. And far from bringing out a national settlement of the abortion issue, Roe and Casey have inflamed debate and deepened division. So that's Justice Samuel Alito's opinion. He's one of the nine Supreme Court justices and he is considered a conservative. So he is against abortion. A person familiar with the court's deliberations said that four of the other Republican appointed justices, Clarence Thomas, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett, had voted with Alito in the conference held among the justices after hearing oral arguments in December, and that lineup remains unchanged as of this week. So, according to this, at least five of the justices we have Alito, Thomas, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barrett are gonna vote to overturn Roe v. Wade, and that'll be enough because there are nine justices, there are five here, so that's the majority. Next paragraph here the three Democratic appointed justices, Stephen Breyer, Sonia Sotomayor, and Elena Kagan are working on one or more dissents according to the person. How Chief Justice John Roberts will ultimately vote and whether he will join an already written opinion or draft his own is unclear. It's likely that these three will vote to keep Roe v. Wade, these uh, Democratic appointed justices, these liberals, and we're not sure how John Roberts will vote because John Roberts has kind of flip-flopped between conservative and liberal points of view. But if what they're saying is true, then John Roberts' opinion won't matter because there's already five conservative justices who are going to vote to overturn Roe v. Wade. So this is part of the update of this article. On Tuesday, after this article was published, Roberts confirmed the authenticity of the draft opinion and said he was ordering an investigation into the disclosure. So I quote him here. Now I'll go to the uh, press release from the official website. Yesterday, a news organization published a copy of a draft opinion in a pending case. Justices circulate draft opinions internally as a routine and an essential part of the court's confidential deliberative work. Although the document described in yesterday's report is authentic, it does not represent the decision by the court or the final position of any member on the issues in the case. Chief Justice John Roberts Jr. provided the following statement. To the extent this betrayal of the confidences of the court was intended to undermine the integrity of our operations, it will not succeed. The work of the court will not be affected in any way. We at the court are blessed to have a workforce, permanent employees and law clerks alike, intensely loyal to the institution and dedicated to the rule of law. Court employees have an exemplary an important tradition of respecting the confidentiality of the judicial process and upholding the trust of the court. This was a singular and egregious breach of that trust that is an affront to the court and the community of public servants who work here. I have directed the marshal of the court to launch an investigation into the source of the leak. 
Okay, so let's unpack this statement here. So first of all, yesterday's report is authentic. So that's super important. This leak is authentic. That draft was not made up. It was a real draft penned by Justice Alito. So let's have a look at what Robert said. Betrayal, he uses the word betrayal here. That's important. So it was a betrayal of the confidences. And then like he's praising the workforce. Blessed to have a workforce intensely loyal to the institution dedicated to the rule of law exemplary and important tradition of respecting the confidentiality so it's saying that this was a singular and egregious breach he's just saying that it was just one rogue person who leaked this and he's just trying to cover for all the other employees saying that they're all totally awesome and stuff and the marshal of the court is going to launch an investigation so i wonder if the marshal is going to talk to this guy Josh Gerstein because we know that he knows and the other guy Alexander Ward these two reporters they know who the leaker is so this uh, marshal of the court he could go to Gerstein and Alexander Ward and ask them well who the hell leaked it to you but of course we know that they're not going to reveal their source these journalists that they never reveal their sources unless they're you know forced to by law and speaking of the law, we don't know if this was actually uh, uh, breaking the law. We don't know if the person actually broke the law. They're talking about, you know, respecting the confidentiality. So was there some confidentiality clause broken here? Do these employees have to sign contracts and stuff saying that they will not leak any information? And nobody seems quite sure what the legal status is. Did, did they commit a crime so who were these suspects so in this article court releases names of law clerks for the 2021-2022 term this was written in july of last year so almost a year ago as far as i know this lineup hasn't changed so basically each justice has four law clerks so you have 36 law clerks in total and then you have the nine justices so that's why i'm saying there's 45 possible suspects now as i said it could be some, some other employees so there's more employees that work in the supreme court and maybe it was one of them who leaked it we don't know the janitor the, the the tea lady who knows but more than likely it's either one of the nine justices which i pretty much doubt i i don't think one of the justices themselves would do it it's more likely to have been one of the 36 law clerks so let's have a look at who these law clerks are so each justice has four law clerks this is the chief justice john roberts his law clerks are Samuel Atkinson, Christine Orgay, Maxwell Gottschall, Dennis Ho, and for Clarence Thomas, Christopher Goodnow, Stephen Lindsay, Michael Proctor, Jose Valle, Justice Stephen Breyer, Elizabeth Deitch, Erica Hogland, Diana Kim, Joel Wax, Samuel Alitos, are Shelby Baird, Thomas Geyser, Eric Palmer, Edward West Jr., and for Sotomayor, Whitney Brown, Amit Jain, Katrin Munyan and Kelly Schiffman. Elena Kagan has Jennifer Fischel, Alexandra Lim, Christine Smith, Andrew Wax. And for Justice Neil Garsuk, Stephanie Barclay, Louis Capazzi, Mark Starsley, John Thompson, Kavanaugh has Alexa Balls, Athanasia Levas, Jennifer Pavlik, Sarah Welsh. Justice Amy Coney Barrett has Libby Baird, Mike Heckman, Max Shulman, and Zachary Tyree. And there's one for Justice Kennedy who's retired, Elizabeth Nielsen. So I guess we have to add her to the list. So maybe there's 46 suspects. And it's likely that one of these 36 or maybe 37 law clerks leaked this document to Josh Gerstein and Alexander Ward. Now, some people on Twitter have been actually name dropping. They've mentioned a couple of these names. But before I look into that, here's the official photograph of the nine justices. We have Alito, Thomas, Roberts, Breyer, Sotomayor, Kavanaugh, Kagan, Garsuk, and Connie Barrett. So it, it might have been one of these nine. Who knows? I, I very much doubt it. It was more than likely one of the 36 law clerks. Now let's talk about the arguments on whether it was a liberal or conservative leaker. Because the conservatives are saying it was clearly a liberal because... They want to try and get this into the public and try and pressure the conservative justices into changing their minds and to uphold Roe v. Wade. And the liberals are saying it was definitely conservative because by leaking it, it will try and ensure that these justices won't change their mind because these justices are going to try and show that 
public pressure won't work. So like uh, Robert said, to the extent that this betrayal of the confidences was intended to undermine the integrity of our operations, it will not succeed. Liberals are pointing to this argument. It was a conservative who leaked it because now the, the justices are going to double down on their initial opinion to try and prove that this leak will not affect the court. So both sides have reasonable arguments. I would say, in my opinion, it was probably a liberal who leaked it because... I think the argument that they want to pressure the, the conservative justices by leaking this to the public is a better argument than saying it was conservative. Now, there's been some name dropping happening. This guy, Matt Walking, has dropped one of the names. Now, he's a Republican advisor and strategist. He has dropped the name of one of the liberal law clerks, so a law clerk working for one of the liberal justices. And I'm not going to reveal who he's talking about because I think people are innocent until proven guilty. You know, you're talking about rule of law and, you know, judicial process. So I'm actually not going to reveal who he's pointing fingers at. If you want to look it up yourself, look up Matt Walking on Twitter. You can see his thread on who he thinks it was. And also we have Will Chamberlain who name drops another liberal law clerk. And again, I'm not going to reveal who he thinks it is but again if you want to find out go to Will Chamberlain on Twitter and he has a thread on who he thinks it is so you can figure it out for yourself Stephen Breyer he's one of the liberals Sotomayor she's one of the liberals and Kagan so you can go and find out for yourself who these names are that they're they're name dropping Matt Walking and Will Chamberlain so there you go guys people are saying this is an absolute disaster it's a catastrophe people are saying that the whole republic is in jeopardy and America is screwed because of this one league uh, I think that's uh, going way too far, but it is a fascinating story. Hopefully we'll find out who the leaker is for sure and all this speculation and hearsay could be put to rest. Who knows if this person is going to face any legal consequences of this. Did they break any laws? Will they face jail time? Will they even face the death penalty? That's probably a bit extreme. Will they be aborted? Probably not. So guys, let me know what you think about this whole situation. What's your opinion on abortion? Are you against it? Are you for it? Are you kind of sitting on the fence about it? And what do you think about the leaker? And what do you think of these guys? Josh Garstein and Alexander Ward. These journalists who published this. Should they have sat on this? Should they have not published it? This is like a, a dream come true for investigative journalists to, to leak a story like this. But there we go. Did they do the right thing? What's your opinion on these guys? All right, guys, I will do an update on this story if there's any major developments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. I have tons of videos and a whole bunch of subjects. So until next time, see you guys later.